This short video is a very brief overview of a multi-year, multidisciplinary research proposal that is an outgrowth of my dissertation. My research started in 2010 as a two-year-long participant observation research project in Miami. And now what I am proposing is a national expansion of the research that I did then. The title of my dissertation, New Public Administration Through an Ecological Lens, A View Toward a Multidisciplinary Curriculum, builds a 350-page foundation for this research proposal. What I hope to do in the next 20 minutes is briefly outline an incredibly detailed research proposal that has been, from the outset, shaped by this interdisciplinary behavioral and social sciences research grant that is funded by the National Science Foundation. I first learned about this grant early in the year 2012, and this year is the final year that it is being offered in this current format. The due date is December 2nd. As an interdisciplinary grant, I will be seeking collaborative partners in this research from these five color-coded colleges at Florida Atlantic University. And you will see them in the top right-hand corner of relevant presentation slides during this video. For other disciplines outside of the five main colleges, I will be using this blue icon to represent other disciplines that will be involved. In writing this grant, the School of Public Administration within the College for Design and Social Inquiry, with Dr. Key Tai as the principal investigator, will assume leadership and administrative responsibilities through our doctoral program from which I will be graduating in December. Dr. Tai and I are looking for co-principal investigators or other senior personnel to work with us, and ideally they would come from the College of Science and their PhD in Psychology program with a focus on social psychology research and from the College of Business in their MBA Management Information Systems track. It is essential that other senior personnel also come from the College of Electrical Engineering and Computer Science where they offer a PhD in Computer Science and from the College of Arts and Letters where they offer an MA in Communication Studies. Just knowing that this grant was out there has materially shaped my dissertation and for all three years of my doctoral program I have had the idea that the problems that originally drove me back to university in 2009 for a bachelor's degree in multimedia journalism would only be solved through a multidisciplinary approach. But before we get into the role that each of the five partner colleges will play in conducting this research, I need to introduce you to my two research questions. The first asks, can street level bureaucrats and community workers in the inner city break free from their hierarchical structures to generate a single intergovernmental and interinstitutional point of contact for the diverse needs of their at-risk population. The second question asks, can a tiny PFLAG group, which is parents and friends of lesbians and gays, who meet around a dining room table in one of Utah's homogeneous suburban communities, have a measurable impact on state policy decisions and thereby gain important rights and protections for their vulnerable children and friends. As different as these two problems might seem from a research perspective, my dissertation supports the idea that these two questions share a common solution. And here's how. This map represents a 15 block long stretch of MLK Boulevard in Liberty City, which is Miami's historically segregated community. The Belafonte Tocolsi Center and I did an inventory of community assets and found well over 20 parks and public buildings within an easy walk of the main thoroughfare. But within this high risk population, those who were quote unquote consumers of public goods and services had to navigate their way through five separate government providers and an almost uncountable number of nonprofit organizations. Worse yet, what I discovered in Miami was that the street-level bureaucrat had really very little input into how they defined their job, which was dictated down from the tops of the hierarchy, or alternatively into the making of policy, which was dictated up to them from the elected bodies. But the absolute worst part of what I saw was that they were severely restricted in how they were able to coordinate their work with other governmental departments and this nonprofit sector. Now, if we just substitute in the word activists or volunteers for a street-level bureaucrat here, it is easy to see that the same kinds of barriers exist for our PFLAG group as exist for street-level bureaucrats. What they share in common is their desire to improve social equity for a vulnerable population. The obstacles for both are, one, the barriers that exist between these administrative silos, and second, their efforts for change at the local level are easily blocked by the powers up the hierarchy 
or from the policy making of the elected body. And so it begs the question, what would an institution look like that is capable of meeting the needs of this unified block? In order to bridge the barriers of these administrative silos, the problem begs for a tool that could facilitate interorganizational communication at this level. The same solution would help the PFLAG chapters just as much as it would help the street-level bureaucrat. The solution, proposed by my dissertation, is a technological solution that would create an information system that would by itself become a non-hierarchical institution. This structure is being embedded into the algorithms of the institutional memory. The key to making this all happen is the person at the center whom I have dubbed the juggler. Statistically, the odds are that this person will be a female, so my representation here is no accident. It is through the new ecology created by this consensus building, non-hierarchical new institution, that the changes proposed by my research are predicted to take place. As noted, central to my research is a clearly defined training regimen for this individual that I have dubbed the juggler, who will be key in the creation of this new institution. Also key to the formation of this new ecology for governance and public administration is the idea that this new institution will be a virtual institution. As represented here, these new governing units, comprised of 18 individuals, will only exist because of an algorithm and an information communication technology. Dubbed Community Solutions Collectives, these CSCs as I call them, can be stacked in a way that highly specialized vertical teams are created, thereby linking a specialist in one city with another similarly situated specialist in another city, as represented here by this stack of black marbles in the center of this Community Solutions Collective. Because Marcos Lopez, a graduate student in the computer science program at FAU, is expected to complete his pre-alpha version of this software in the fall 2014 semester, by the time the IBSS grant funds, we should be ready to immediately engage three national organizations in testing this information system. Marcos and I have been working on this pre-alpha version of the software since he was a junior, and I have relied upon the $5,000 Newell Fellowship that I received for the 2013-2014 academic year in order to pay him for his work so far. The first of three national organizations that I have been looking at as collaborative partners is Reverend Al Sharpton's National Action Network, which currently has 77 chapters nationwide. Reverend Al's organization is poised for immediate growth, and Edward Rowe would take lead in training key chapter personnel in how to leverage the MOXIE systems in that goal. Edward Rowe is a 17-year employee at FAU with eight years in the Human Resources Department and nine years in the Office of Equal Opportunity Programs. Ed's current position at FAU is as the Associate Director of Equal Opportunity Programs, but equally important, he has been an active member of FAU's Institutional Review Board, serving as the non-scientific member for the past nine years. Related to the National Action Network is Education for a Better America. Dr. Marcus Bright, a recent FAU graduate, also in the doctoral program of public administration, along with Dominique Sharpton, Reverend Al's daughter, lead Education for a Better America. And although it is a startup nonprofit, Marcus has already forged strong ties to sports celebrities like Isaiah Thomas and numerous other schools, universities, and community organizations. What EBA needs is a tool like the MOXIE systems to leverage its growth with little or no overhead costs. And this is what the MOXIE systems have also been engineered to do, and how it does that will be an integral part of this research program. Both Education for a Better America and National Action Network will serve as the research gateway into exploring research question number one. And as it relates to supporting research endeavors into research question number two, a collaborative agreement will be pursued with PFLAG, a national organization that has more than 350 chapters across the United States. And as a formal collaborative partner, funding support will be allowed to flow through from FAU to these three participating organizations. This is vital because these organizations will be expected to incur significant one-time technology expenses as well as ongoing operating costs in order to be active in the research program. To conclude this short introduction then, we can now look at the purpose statement of my dissertation and examine it for how it is ideally suited to this IBSS grant. Broken into four points, you can see on the right how each one of these four points interfaces with the five colleges that will play a key role in research at Florida Atlantic University. Now, if your time is limited, this might be a good point to stop watching the video, but I would hope that you would return when you have more time to look more closely into the purpose statement. 
If you can afford the time now, please keep watching, and it will only take me about 10 more minutes to explain each of these four points of the purpose statement in detail. Starting with the first point, we have to understand that there are narratives guiding some of our public institutions, most notably at the state level, that seem to be focused on perpetuating the marginalization of already vulnerable populations. And so we want to combat this problem of how power within public institutions is susceptible to being abused through the mobilization of bias. At some point in our country's history, certain groups were cast as either undeserving or deviant. Sometimes these narratives seem to be supported by governing institutions themselves. Thereby justifying in the minds of public servants up and down the hierarchical structures certain actions that end up creating an unequal and in some cases highly restricted distribution of public goods and services. In my dissertation I use the example in Florida of state level decisions about public school funding that demonstrate the adverse impact that this has had on inner city schools while favoring already well-funded schools in the suburban cities. And in Utah, I use the example of how the state sued Salt Lake City itself to block them from providing domestic partner benefits to their employees. Because these are problems where bias is being mobilized within our public institutions, notably this being done by state governments themselves, my research proposes an institutional solution to such an institutional problem, making this a problem that is uniquely suited for the public administration discipline. As the second bullet point of my purpose statement, my dissertation proposes that it is only through training that social equity activists, these activists who are already embedded in the community in ways that National Action Network and Education for a Better America and PFLAG leaders are, that it is only through training that these social equity activists will be capable of seeing this broad vision that underscores how there are structural dynamics at play. And furthermore, by understanding these structural dynamics, these social equity activists will understand how they are to blame for virtually every kind of oppression. It is in this realm where the interdisciplinary nature of this right research kicks in. Public administration might be capable of putting into place an institutional solution that is ideally suited to this kind of social equity activism, but we are not experts in social psychology, nor are we experts in media theory and communication. Public administration can, however, be instrumental in engineering the displacement of those structural dynamics once they have been effectively identified. At this point, our examination of the purpose statement has us halfway through the 30-step inductive analysis sequence that make up my six hypotheses that were identified in my dissertation. It is at the fourth hypothesis where things expand beyond being interdisciplinary and verge upon becoming multidisciplinary. For the third bullet point of the purpose statement, the research expands into the essential nature of the information communication technology. And for the final point, as the brain of this new virtual institution, this institutional memory becomes the very glue that holds the movement together. For that to happen, individuals in these partner organizations will need to understand how the information system serves as a central role. Which translates to the last three hypotheses of the inductive analysis sequence. As I mentioned, I did a count within the colleges of Florida Atlantic University and found out that, in all likelihood, there could be up to 15 departments involving eight of the nine colleges involved in the research through this 30-step inductive sequence. It is important to note that in light of what the two research questions sought to address, the culmination of the inductive sequence of the six hypotheses is represented by an ability of the population of interest to actually win an election and to have a transformational impact on policy change. As Schatz Snyder implied in 1948, this is the most legitimate question to be asked in a democracy, and that is, how can people get control of the government? The final step in the sixth hypothesis answers that question, and my dissertation describes this change by underscoring the importance of devolving power out of the hierarchies down to the street-level bureaucrats. But it is essential that before we, and by we I mean public administration as a discipline, do that, we have to devise a mechanism for truly effective collective governance. Once understood as a multidisciplinary research program, this is how I draw up my reductionistic diagrammatic model to represent how the action research undertaking for this IBSS grant will be carried out over a three-year period of funding. Why I have these two proxies here, 
one for my primary independent variable and the other for my first intervening variable, is central to operationalizing this research, but it is far too complex to introduce into this video. Suffice it to say that as stated in the purpose statement, the ability to mobilize bias started as my primary independent variable, but my proxy is there to explore the mechanism through which bias is traditionally mobilized. My first intervening variable, on the other hand, started as an exploration into what it is exactly that lends credence to the power claims of those who use their power to mobilize bias. And this is when the question of legitimate power comes into the research, which leads us to ask, who is it that determines who the undeserving and deviant are? For my final research graphic, I want to just quickly introduce the full diagrammatic model of the proposed research program. This is the model that more accurately reflects the various embedded research projects. I look forward to an opportunity to do an hour-long presentation of exactly what is contained in my dissertation, but more importantly, I hope for the opportunity to collaborate with each of you in improving the lives of some of the most vulnerable people in our local communities. To close, I just want to show two screen captures from the IBSS grant proposal to underscore why I feel that FAU can and should seek this funding. As shown on this slide here, FAU is a good fit because the proposal will be evaluated on the interdisciplinarity of the research team, which in this case pulls from five colleges at the university and proposes to involve two long-established national organizations, the National Action Network and PFLAG, as well as a startup national organization. FAU is also a good fit because this project proposes to integrate several unique research approaches as it advances through the 30-step inductive sequence of the six hypotheses. A third reason is because if the research is supported, it will likely have a permanent impact on pedagogical methods within public administration, social psychology, and information systems design. And finally, this research program is also a good fit for this grant funding because it has a strong foundation in three of the four cross-cutting research themes that were identified as high priorities for the National Science Foundation Directorate for Social, Behavioral, and Economic Sciences. It proposes to explore the centuries-old depth of where the disparities in social equity emerge from and how they are perpetrated through the narrative communities that have deeply embedded defense mechanisms that kick in without any human intervention. And the solution that is proposed comes from an innovative and completely new application of technology, new media, and social networks. I thank you very much for your time, and I look forward to hearing from you.